All right, so back at it today. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not there. We're going to go through some missing. So we're going to use trig, and this time we're going to do missing angles. Instead of missing sides, we're doing missing angles, okay? So before we get into missing angles, we're going to talk about how do we actually solve for x, because this is really what we need to do uh, when we're doing solving for angles, is um, normally, remember, our formula for sine was sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So if our angle measure is x, we're going to have sine of x is equal to something. And the question is, how do we get x by itself? Okay. And so the answer to that is sort of similar to if I was solving for x in this equation, y equals 2x, uh, 2x equals 14, I would normally divide by 2. And this is essentially because, okay, um, these numbers here, when I divide out, um, are inverse operations. So dividing by 2 is the opposite of multiplying by 2, and this gives me 1. And so this gets this to drop out, and I end up with 7. And if I have x squared, I'm going to square root, because that undoes the squaring. And I get x is equal to plus or minus 3. All right. So how do you think we get rid of the sine and sine x? And what I want you to notice is that scatter plots a minute so I'm going to go here. All right. New document. Don't want to save. We're going to open a calculator page. Okay. What I want you guys to do is um, I want you to hit trig. And I want you to hit sign, and I want you to pick any number. Pick a number, whatever you want. I'm going to pick, um, we'll pick some Josh Allen here, pick some 17. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in front of this, okay? Arrow in front, and in front of this, I'm going to insert something. And I'm going to go ahead and go trig again. And this time I'm going to pick the sign inverse, okay? And see how I'm going to delete this guy, and I'm going to get sign inverse of... The sine of 17. And whatever number you pick, don't you don't have to pick 17. Go ahead and hit enter and watch what happens. Okay? What did you notice? If you pick something other than 17, let's say we picked uh, 47, right? I get 47. The only thing that doesn't want to work here is if we pick something, I believe, over... Uh, no, that works too. Um, so you should be good here. And notice that all these come out to be the same thing. So what is that? Oh, this one didn't work. This one got us 80. Mm, interesting. Um, but if we stick below 90, okay, you'll see you get the same number as we started with. Okay. We'll talk about this another time. But what actually happens is the sine inverse and sine are undoing each other. Okay. And by doing that, we end up with whatever the angle is. And so how do you think we solve for sine x? We use what's called the inverse function or the arc function. So I'm going to take the sine inverse of the sine of x, okay? And that means I also, whatever I do to one side, by inserting the sine of x over here, I have to insert the sine of x on this side. And so the sine inverse of the sine of x cancel out, and that leaves me with x. And on this side, I'm just going to take my calculator again, okay? I'm going to press uh, trig, maybe. I'm going to click on the spot first, and then press trig, go to sine inverse, and then if I enter in a half, it tells me 30. And if you remember from yesterday, I know that if I take the sine of 30, I get a half. So the sine inverse is actually saying, if you can tell me the two sides you're using to make your ratio, then I will tell you what the angle is that you would need to make that ratio. So essentially, you're giving it the ratio of the sides, and the calculator is telling you the angle you need to form it. Okay, that's it. And so this is just equal to 30. And that's all we have to do to solve for missing angles, is use the inverse or arc function. And so instead of writing the inverse of sine, we said sine to the negative 1, right? Sine inverse, we can also use arc sine. And the same thing uh, happens here. Okay, so make sure in degrees, turn the equation into x equals arc sine or sine inverse. Okay, 
and then you're going to press trig, enter in that, type in half, and then kick enter to kick the angle measure. So our process to solve for angles is exactly the same as yesterday with sines. I'm looking for the angle measure. We're going to use that Greek letter today, theta, for unknown angles, okay? So all you're going to do is draw a circle and then add a little belt onto your circle there, okay? That's theta. So that's your missing angle. We want to round to the nearest hundredth. So I'm still going to use so katoa here, okay? Two sides and an angle. So remember, so uh, that's a terrible, terrible age, Mr. Z. And you guys got me talking on third person now. And Toa. Okay. So from this angle, across the way is my opposite side. There's the hypotenuse, which I'm not using. And there's my adjacent. And so since I'm using opposite and adjacent, we're going to use tangent. So we start with our formula. Tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And then I plug in tangent of theta is equal to 28 over 40. And then we want to undo the tangent. So we're going to take the tangent inverse of both of these, tangent theta. And on the other side, we're going to do the tangent inverse of 28 over 40. Okay. And so what we know is that, I just cleaned up the 40 there, that this tangent and the tangent inverse undo themselves. And on my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and hit trig, tangent inverse, and then 28 over 40. And when I hit enter, there we go. And I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, so that's 34.99. And this is in degrees, because it's an angle. And make sure our calculator appears in degree mode. Okay? If your calculator is in radian mode, okay, it says radians, uh, notice that if we try to redo this, we get a totally different answer. Okay? So if you get a crazy answer, you're like, man, that doesn't seem right. It's probably because you're in radians. Okay? So click on the wheel, the settings wheel here. Go to document settings. And then just change radian to degree, okay? And then you can tab down to where it says make default. Click enter and go ahead and click OK for settings. And that's it, okay? That's all you're doing for angles, guys. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Find the measure of the labeled angle to the nearest degree. So here's my angle, okay? Label my sides, so adjacent, hypotenuse. And then I'm going to do so... Toa. And as long as you write this somewhere on your page, you don't have to read it every time. Um, I'm reading it a lot because I can't see it when I scroll the screen down here. So I know I'm going to use cosine for this one. So cosine of the angle. This one's A. A is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then cosine of A is equal to 13 over 20, and then we're going to go ahead and take the cosine inverse of both sides. All right, these are going to undo, and then we go ahead and take our calculator, menu, oh, trig, cosine inverse, 13 over 20, and there's our answer. And we're going to the nearest degree, so that would be 50 degrees. All right, you guys are going to try this one on your own. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, example number four, if you've gone through and do that one. A uh, 16-foot ladder leaning against a wall. The ladder is seven feet from the wall, so we need to draw a picture. Okay, so we have a wall, wall, right? And I have a ladder leaning up against my wall. Okay. The ladder we know is 16 feet. Okay. Um, and the foot of the ladder, which means where the ladder hits the ground, is 7 feet from the wall. So this distance to the wall is 7 feet. And this is 16 again. Okay. 
and I'm trying to find the vertical distance from the ground to where the point ladder touches the wall. So I'm actually looking for this right here. Now, remember, when do we use uh, our two formulas for right triangles? They are Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa. So remember, when do we use what here? Okay. For this one, it's just the sides only. And for this one, we need, right, two sides. One of them is unknown, really like one side and one angle. Okay. So here, I'm only referring to side lengths. I'm trying to figure out this. So this one is going to be Pythagorean theorem. So c squared minus b squared equals a squared. And then 16 squared minus 7 squared. Okay. It's 207. Square both sides. And it does say nearest tenth. And we're going to get 14.4. And this technically is in feet. All right. Okay, next part we want to do is we want to find the measure of the angle formed by the ladder in the ground. So that's down here. Okay, so that's theta. All right. And we're going to use, we'll use the 7 and the 16 here. So 7 is the adjacent side. 16 is my hypotenuse. And so if we're doing Sokotoa again, okay, we know we were using adjacent and hypotenuse here. So we're going to use cosine. So cosine of my angle. All right. And we do cosine of theta is equal to adjacent 7 over 16. And then we're going to go ahead and take the cosine inverse of both sides. Okay, cosine inverse, there we go, 7 over 16. I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator, trig, cosine inverse, 7 over 16, and I get 64 point, we're going to round it to the nearest degree. And so theta is equal to 64 degrees. Remember these, we're going to cross out. That's it, guys. Pretty much the, what we're doing the whole rest of the class here, okay? So I will post um, the answers all the way through the exercises. If you guys want to check Schoology, they'll be in there. And then your homework tonight, due on tomorrow, is going to be the last page, okay? So check the video uh, or the answers for yourself, and then you can go ahead and do the homework here. You know, um, we'll do one more. So we'll take a look at this guy once again. So just a quick recap, right? You can see... When we're looking for the measure of the angle, okay, so uh, the opposite side is 14. This is my adjacent. There's my hypotenuse. I know that I'm going to be using opposite and adjacent. So if you need to write Sokotoa, go ahead. And since I'm using the opposite and adjacent, I'm going to be using tangent here. So tangent of my angle is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, and then we just plug in. So the tangent of C is equal to 14 over 29, and then we're gonna go ahead and take the tangent inverse. I just wanna make sure we're gonna read that better. Tangent inverse, tangent C, and tangent inverse of my ratio. These will go ahead and cancel each other out. And then we're going to go ahead and do trig. Tangent inverse, 14 over 29. And we're going to round to the nearest degree. And so that's going to be 25.7 or 26 degrees. All right. If you don't have a calculator when you get home or you can't do tangent inverse, 
on your um, phones. So just take it as far as this, and then you can stop right here. You'll show me all of this work, okay? I have a stylus, might as well use it. I can do all of this work, and then when I get into school, I can go ahead and type this in and tell you what the degree is, okay? So just having a calculator just means you can't do the last step. All right, guys, have yourselves a great one, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.